And we are in the beautiful Pearl, but Methodist Church. So would you join us as we do our welcoming song? We come together in this moment to find our hearts and minds, for we all form a tapestry woven from one life, one creation. So welcome to this 4th of July. And hello, I'm Reverend Barbara Williams, and it's so good to have you here. It's so good to be in this church, in this sacred space. So I would like to begin with prayer. And part of my prayer this morning is I looked up something in the Daily Word for July 4th, but the year happens to be 1943, the Daily Word. And it just really touched my soul. So I'd like to pray using this daily word as we start our service. So I invite you to close your outer eyes. And let's just feel ourselves grounded in this moment as we come together to celebrate freedom. And so in 1943, we remember that we are in the midst of a fight that felt like a fight for freedom of the world. And so these words, I can imagine all the people that read these words in 1943 as we read them again. And the daily word that day was independence. Affirm continually, I give thanks for freedom and independence in our land, and I pray for the whole world that liberty, justice, righteousness, and peace may be established. Dear friend, today the United States of America is celebrating Independence Day. This year, more of us are aware of the real meaning of the day than heretofore, more determined that all the people of the United States shall continue to have independence and freedom. And the thought of the people of the United States is reaching beyond our own borders to the peoples of all lands. The prayer in our hearts is that they too may find a way of life that gives them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We ask you as truth students to join us today in a prayer of thanksgiving for freedom and independence in our own land and in a prayer that this world conflict may be speedily ended and that liberty, justice, 
righteousness and peace may be established in the whole world. What we want is a righteous peace founded on Christian principles. Thus, we are today establishing a peace consciousness that will bring enduring peace. And from Galatians 5.1, the freedom of Christ has set us free. So let's just take these words, our affirmation, I give thanks for freedom and independence in our land. And I pray for the whole world that liberty, justice, righteousness, and peace may be established. And so we just take a moment and allow those words to sink in for ourselves within us, knowing that that freedom begins in our minds and hearts. And so we bring that conscious awareness that we are called, each of us this day, to move through the world, affirming that we are free that our families are free to choose love, that our world is free to choose love. And so it is, amen and amen. And so I'd like a couple announcements. And if this is the first time joining, um, we have a website and you could sign up and get all the emails. And so it's a combination of two websites. So it'll be easier to remember. Unity.org will tell you everything you'd ever want to know about Unity and where to find a Unity church near you. And Chautauqua has chq.org where you can find out about coming and joining us. I hope you will. And then if you combine those Unity and CHQ to unitychq.org, that's us. And you can sign up and you can be part of the 10 weeks. And then monthly, we, we will follow through on Zoom for the rest of the year. So um, welcome. And today, I'd like to introduce our minister of the day, Reverend James Stacy. Yes, I want you to come up right here. And I want to tell you something special about this man. On, on the website you can find out all the wonderful things. And he has a long history. In fact, he graduated, you probably didn't know this, but you graduated two years before I did from school. So, and so here we meet. You were leaving ministerial school as I was coming. I was just starting, um, which is pretty cool that you, you, I was in the wake of what you were creating, you and your class. Um, but the other thing I want to say is James has such an amazing dedication to Unity and to Chautauqua. And so he brought us all these daily words. He arranged for Unity to give us hundreds of daily words to pass out in Chautauqua. Um, his love for Unity and his understanding of the history of Unity is probably the most um, deeply understood history of anyone I've met. And so we are just so blessed that you, after our lead in song, you are going to share with us that deep and would you like to say a few words? We're going to be on Wednesday night together at 6.30 on Zoom and Facebook Live, again from our website, unitychq.org. And what are you going to talk about? Well, my class this week, uh, Barbara suggested uh, when I was thinking about a class and lesson that I uh, do something that I'm passionate about. And I'm passionate about unity. And in class, we're going to look, how did unity start? The mother of unity, Myrtle Fillmore, had a very simple process of her own spiritual development, which the, she then expanded, and it became a whole global movement. And so it's not complicated. It's three simple steps, and we're going to work with that on Wednesday night for our own individual benefit, the benefit of this community and the world. Thank you, James. So now we're going to sing in your lesson. 
by swinging wide the door. Good morning, friends, and all of Chautauqua. It's my honor and pleasure to celebrate week two at Chautauqua with you. I first visited Chautauqua in 2004, 17 years ago, and I've had the pleasure to serve Unity of Chautauqua many times since. However, this is new. This is my first time to be with you, both in this beautiful sanctuary and also online. So I want to give thanks for those who are joining online this morning, friends of Unity of Chautauqua, of Barbara's Church. I know I have members of my church in Minneapolis who are watching this morning, as well as friends in Missouri and other locations. So thank you all for being here because you do add to our collective consciousness this morning. First, I want to begin 
and set our minds upon this beautiful wisdom that Paul shared in his first letter to Corinth. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Unity Worldwide Ministries, the organization of all unity churches and centers around the world met earlier in June in a virtual annual conference. I think it's important for me to share with you just a few of the highlights, and I do mean briefly. We heard many lectures and workshops on a variety of subjects, but there were four areas that were really significant for me as a minister, for other ministers involved. One, of course, they talked about developing hybrid unity ministries like this one in person and online. And there's a lot to learn. I know you've discovered this morning, my church is online for the 68th time um, and we're still learning. And I've learned from ministries who've been online for many years, you'll always be learning. Things evolve and that's good because when things evolve, that's the evidence of life and renewal. We also discussed in the conference the transition from limitations of the COVID-19 experience and letting those go. In unity, we say denying, releasing them so that we can take up the new opportunities and possibilities before us now. There was also great discussion of the Earth Care Program. It is a program for unity ministries to progress through educating their congregation and developing loving activities toward the earth. That is through recycling, energy efficiency. We claim in unity our love for this earth that God has formed and given us as a home. So there's now interest in a more focused way that unity congregations can help build up, nurture, care for, and respect our earth. And Unity Worldwide Ministries, our parent, is developing new strategies with the purpose, not to ask us to teach things exactly as they formulate it, but to empower all our ministries, to give them the tools and the resources to do what they feel is theirs to do. So it's much more centered on the ministries than it has been perhaps in previous years. Now, I would be happy to answer any questions about unity and its evolution with you during this week, but I want to move on to this idea that we are sharing with Chautauqua as a whole, looking to the future. What's it gonna be? What's it going to be for the world? for Chautauqua, for our global unity movement. There are some common themes that we share and that we can develop together. And I'm going to encourage us to use our God-given power of imagination. You all know unity's model of the 12 powers of the human being and imagination is a particularly creative power. And we'll discuss that in a few moments. Recall that closing line in T.S. Eliot's Little Gidding. We shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we began and to know the place for the first time. In our unity beginning, there was already an awareness of virtual gathering 130 years ago, almost. Silent Unity, our global prayer ministry, the producer of the Daily Word, 
already claimed thousands of members, registered members, by the year 1900. However, these folks weren't at Unity headquarters in Kansas City, Missouri. They were a gathering that met in consciousness, that is, in heart and mind. And I thank the musicians for choosing such appropriate music and lyrics for this morning and this idea that we can join together in heart and mind even when we are not physically present to one another. Throughout our country and eventually beyond America, Friends of Unity gathered not in person, but in mind and heart. They focused on a specific affirmation or positive prayer sent out from Unity headquarters. They would all hold that one class thought, it was called. They were willing, willing to become a unity in the silence, or we might say now a virtual unity, and hold the same vision and thought as Reverend Barber did this morning in inviting us to hold that idea of freedom, to hold it as a possibility, to hold it as a gift of God placed in the very center of our being. And we can always begin first in holding that potential of freedom for ourselves, our community, and ultimately for our world. If you're like me, one of those Americans that likes to do things or fix things, it might be a challenge to respect the power of prayer and of silent unity and consciousness. But my friends, everything begins in mind, as our founder Charles Fillmore said. And so when we want to hold goodwill for the world, we want to be a beneficial presence in the world, then we want to hold these high ideals, recognizing that leaders throughout the world always, always have access to wisdom, to goodwill, to visions of peace for the whole world. We hold that in prayer first, in mind first, and then, we can have inspired actions in the outer world to achieve that, to work toward it. One affirmation, affirmation often spoken by our Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore was, in our unity of purpose, we are guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love. I like to give it my paraphrase in our shared purpose, we access limitless insight and vision. And by spirit's creative substance, we are able to manifest these ideas. So I predict our unity future will mean building on our roots of invisible gatherings, virtual gatherings being of one mind and heart in prayer, wherever we may be individually in the world, wherever our ministries may be, at Chautauqua, Minneapolis, Florida, all over the world. Just imagine that thought of the unity that we can find, the power of coming together in a shared vision, a centering prayer focus, Imagine the new possibilities for unity of Chautauqua to bring unity friends all over the country into a shared experience, gathered within consciousness and assisted by technology. As the Chautauqua Institution and its president, Michael Hill, envisioned a while back a future that will no longer be limited to these sacred grounds in Western New York that cannot be a gathering of creative minds and caring hearts around the world. Chautauqua is now reaching far beyond these grounds and bringing people together. For many years, I was inspired 
at Chautauqua by the great Reverend Dr. Joan Brown Campbell. I was pleased as she was director of the Department of Religion to hear her amazing wisdom and compassion in prayers and sermons throughout many years. She often reminded us that although she was bold, although we were different in our experiences, our life stories, our theologies, and we held differing opinions about everything. At Chautauqua, we come together willingly in a shared experience. Our differences are suspended for a time as we acknowledge our oneness within God's creation. I recall here one of her many prayers. Creator God, God of justice and mercy, you have always called your people out of darkness into marvelous light. You invite us to set aside a world of hurt and hopelessness to join you as co-creator of a world of promise and possibility. You urge us to risk, even to fail, looking toward a future that is beyond our knowledge. So with gratefulness and humility, we pray for guidance as we risk setting forth our best and boldest ideas. Each of you and those online as well, play an important role in our future as a unity community and by extension as part of our entire world. Through your vision, participation, and support, you are making a difference in how our future is unfolding. We will continue to use our thoughts, words, and feelings, and actions to create the unity of the future. And as we continue to focus on our expectations and dreams for this ministry and all of our movement, we will move forward through our focused actions. Thoreau encouraged people to walk confidently in the direction of your dreams. Charles Fillmore advised people, if you want more peace, prosperity, goodwill, do the things that make for prosperity, peace, and goodwill. Emmett Fox, another beloved minister, although not in unity, he was beloved by our movement. He wrote a sermon, The Mental Equivalent. You must have in mind the mental equivalent of what you wish to see manifested in your world. And last night, that wonderful concert touched upon the musical South Pacific, and it brought to my mind those wonderful lyrics. Talk about things you'd like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to have a dream come true? In our unity teachings, a powerful tool for visioning is contained in that 12 power model. So let's draw from this colorful palette that we use mentally and heartfully to bring our lives and our world into manifestation. There are 12 powers, but I'm only going to touch on three, faith, imagination, order. By faith, we know that ideas, dreams, visions have seed power creative power to grow and develop. By imagination, we can see in mind how ideas take on shape and color. Possibility and potential is shaped by imagination into visions of what can be. And by order, we can see progressive strategic development of our ideas. As Jesus expressed it so beautifully 
first the seed, and then the stalk, and then the full grain of the ear. That when we work with the world, we need to recognize and order our priorities, what we call in unity a divine order, by working with the flow of creation. We begin with seed. It grows and brings forth fruit. We don't get upset because the fruit doesn't just first appear. We've got to remember that seed thought. So I would like us in our remaining time to have a brief meditation where we can work with these ideas. And first, we're going to set the stage or the mood through beautiful music from Janine and Ronnie. I invite you now to turn your attention within. Close your eyes if you choose. And to remember you are not going into your own soul in isolation. We close our eyes so that we can go from an awareness of the outer world and find a centering, a powerful focus in the inner world, the essential truths within each one, within all. We recall those words of Paul. Each of us have been given spiritual gifts 
to bring forth for the common good. We all have a part to play, as Shakespeare would say, each with our own entrances and exits in this stage of life. So in this moment, let us hold this pattern of inner realization that is three steps, faith, imagination, order. We can ask ourselves, do I believe the power of spirit of God works through me into the development of the world? Do I trust the creative process of life? Can I believe that this creative process will be fruitful? It's like trusting a seed. I plant it. I know in due time it will germinate, grow, and bring a bountiful harvest, blessing me and all concerned. So by faith, I affirm in mind, I believe in the creative power of life. Now I invite you to imagine for yourself, create an inner vision. And I ask us to direct it specifically toward unity of Chautauqua. What would you like to see continue? Or what new idea would you like to see initiated in this very unique unity ministry? See it in your mind's eye. Use your creative power. Flesh it out, bring color to this desire or idea and trust by faith that it has the ability to express. And now, the third principle, order, priority, creative strategy. strategy. What do you see as the necessary first step for that imagined idea to come forth for this wonderful unity of Chautauqua, this creative ministry now reaching more broadly into the world. Wisdom works through you to see the creative steps. What is first? And now imagine what small sweet step can you take, you individually, to help bring this first priority forward for unity of Chautauqua? We each have a part and a role to play. So as we begin to bring this moment of inner, contemplation to a close. Remember at any time, you can turn your attention from the outer world to the inner creative world of ideas and say, do I have faith in life? Yes. I can use my creative imagination to shape the vision I hold and to see all of its possibilities. And third, through the power of divine order, I can see what the first step is to be taken and my role, my part in that first step. So as we close this inner work, we all always say thank you, almighty spirit, everlasting presence that you work through me through all people 
to do your work in this world. I am grateful, privileged, and willing to do my part. And so we seal this with amen, which means so it is, and so I let it be. I invite you to gradually open your eyes as you are ready. And let me seal this time first with a little reprise of our music and a closing poem. Why have you come to earth? Do you remember? Why have you taken? On this Independence Day, let us close with that great ideal of our country, e pluribus unum, out of many, one, for our future in unity is creating an ever greater oneness or unity in our work through the power of virtual gathering, gathering in mind and heart. I thank you for the opportunity to be with you this morning. Have a great day and summer. Okay, take a deep breath of that for this uh, 4th of July. What a gift. Thank you so much. And so now is a time for our offering. And let's say our offertory blessing, it's on your handout and those on remote are seeing it on their screen. And what I like to do is, um, I send my gift in once a year for the whole year. And so I don't have it in my hands, but I realize that the consciousness is within me. So whatever your gift is, just hold that, hold that gift. For the many ways that we receive your gifts from our website and through the mail and just all the wonderful ways that we are continually blessed. We say divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Thank you, God. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all 
And so we're going to end with our unity prayer protection. And just to remind you that that unity prayer lives on the moon. It was taken up by Buzz Aldrin and left. It was one of his favorite prayers. And also that as we began this today, we talked about 1943 and the daily word then. Um, that prayer was written because of World War II to hold the consciousness throughout unity of peace. So um, let's say it together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, God. And thank you for being part of this service today.